hands on the class management dealing with this? Um, just one, like in the beginning, I would have parents that wanted to come and see what was happening at the end of the lesson, but it was kind of disruptive, but I didn't know how to handle it. I, I mean, I don't mind being no. curious, but it was kind of like putting an end to the lesson five minutes early or so, because once the parents come in, the, the kids wouldn't listen or, you know, Definitely, like and that's a really good thing. Parents you sometimes you get those parents that want to come in there. Um, we do occasionally, we encourage having a parent volunteer. Um, we've had some really great ones. Tracy, case in point, was a parent volunteer that was just absolutely wonderful and really helps out the class. Um, but that's a designated person that goes through the office, says, I'd like to volunteer. They're committed to be there. They know what's going on. You know, and they're an assistant in the class. But other than that, we do not bring parents into the class. Um, and usually the best way that I tell them, um, I think, is just to say, you know, it's, I appreciate you wanting to come and be a part of it, but it's very disruptive for the class, especially the other children. A lot of times they're going to think, well, it's no way my kid doesn't want me in there. And that kid's like, Mom, get out of here. You know, I don't want you, you know. But the parent's not going to, the parent thinks their kid wants them to be there. Um, so if you tell them, you know what, it's really disruptive for the other kids, and sometimes the other kids get embarrassed, don't want to play in front of other people, they get nervous when someone else is in there. Um, we'll be having a concert coming up in a few months. We encourage your child to, you know, play the songs for you at home, um, and, and that would be the way. I've actually had a, a classes like that um, where I would have to post a large sign, I just make a sign that said, parents, you know, class ends at four o'clock, please wait patiently outside here. Because I'd have parents that come and they'd actually have this whole little social thing going on the last 10 minutes of class and her yip yap and I'm trying to teach and it's like, wait a minute, not so working out. We can have like a, I know each school is going to be individual, but uh -huh. like I would like a letter for many older parents with the pickup procedure, like and you're expected to wait outside and, and just put in mind somewhere so they know from the beginning. That's a good idea. We'll put that, um, the, the stuff they get on the first package thing, it'll probably be generic, so it won't have a time or anything on it, but we'll say, you know, please wait patiently outside, your child will be dismissed, um, when class is done, please do not disrupt, we'll come up with something, and we'll put that in to that, yes. Being as every school is different, and, and if, if you're an experienced teacher with our program like Tracy is, maybe it would be better if she's at different schools if she came up with her own letter and just ran it through Chris. Yeah, that would be fine. If you wanted to do something that was specific, because some the parents come to the class, other ones you walk them out to car line, um, you know, so it's a different situation. We will definitely, I think that's a good idea, put something generic in there that stresses that, you know, you pick them up at the end of class, not halfway through. Um, but if you would like to, to write up something that's specific for your own class, for your own pickup procedure, um, that you're more than welcome to do that. Just email it to Chris ahead of time. He'll glance over it, and you know, then you know you can do that. That's that perfectly, perfectly okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions on the question sheet? <laughs> the damage procedures. Like, what do you guys do when the child is literally? Tell that they weren't taken care of. Okay, good question. Um, insurance covers normal wear and tear on the instrument. And this will all be explained on the stuff that parents don't ever read when you hand it out anyway, so but we have to hand it out. It's also printed on the website. Covers normal wear and tear of the instrument. It does not cover theft or loss. So if they don't return anything, then they're responsible for, for the purchase price of the instrument. Um, it does not cover willful destruction. We have had a kid actually take a violin and throw it up against the wall. Does not cover that. And he wasn't even one of our students. students. So, you know, the kid had it out in the hallway and someone else came and just, whoosh. Um, yeah, not fun. Um, it does not cover total destruction. So if it's, if it's obvious, um, you know, that the kid's not handling, you know, when it comes back in, if it's in pieces, then that's not covered. Um, and what you do, just let us know, and we handle it from our end. If parents have any issues about that, just refer them back to us. Just so I, I would say if a student brought an instrument to you and it was completely 
looking like somebody sat on it, it's completely crushed it, just for an example, then you would contact Chris and let him know, and I wouldn't send another one home that week with him. No. I, I, I'd wait. But there are, there are there are cases, and you can kind of take it, I mean, use your best discretion at If you have a question, call us. Um, you know, we're going to stand by what, what our teachers, you know, feel. Um, it, they do get dropped. Kids will drop a violin. I've seen it happen during class. They might come back with it and, you know, it's, it's obviously been dropped and it was a genuine accident. It's, up, it's pretty clear usually when it's clearly an accident when it's not. If you have any question about it, you know, call us and, and you know, let us know the case and we'll probably take it on an individual basis. Of, yeah, just probably what the teacher's recommendation right. is. The you most know. thing that, that, I've, that we've had happen, though, is either loss or theft. And that's been the biggest issue. Um, miraculously, though, when they're lost and you tell the parent that they have to pay $360 to replace the violin, it gets found pretty quick. Um, so uh, that's, but um, you can refer that back to, to us. And I can do incentive stuff for them to kind of take care of the instrument, like, okay, if you're well, what, just in general, if they take care of it, can I do a reward type? Yeah, you'll have like stickers and different awards and things in your in your thing. And if you if you would like to definitely you know reward if they're really taking care of their instrument, maybe we could have a a little award for good care of your instrument. You know, and it's a little thing that we can hand out periodically. I think that's a good idea. We should jot that down. Hey, Allie, we should jot down some of this. Yeah. yeah, and the thing about the dismissal. Now, do you guys, yeah. Do you generally go over the rules of the classroom with the kids? Because when I saw the, the little skit that you did um, as to what the first day would be like, do you, as, when you introduce yourself, do you say, okay, my rules for the classroom is X, Y, Z, and you, you don't want to be confrontational, obviously, and be like, you know, the stop or anything, but just basically tell them this is what I expect of you and so long as everybody adheres to it then everything is going to run smoothly and everybody's going to have fun like how do you I've that? never done that per se in class usually mine is my biggest thing is, is they have to be respectful they have to be respectful of the teacher they have to be respectful of the students and usually that covers pretty much everything in between if they follow that I, I was going to say the same thing that I have three rules and sometimes at the first lesson I do that. Um, glad you're here. You've been a great time to violate. By the way, I have three rules. And my three rules are respect each other. And I make that rule number one. Respect the other kids in your classroom, in, in, in our class. And the other is respect the instrument. And I put respect the teacher as third. And then I explain why. And I'm not saying you guys have to do this, but it seems a natural thing for them to want to respect the teacher more because there's a little intimidation thing there. But when I put the other kids and the instrument over myself, it's kind of really underlining that I respect them. And, you know, as you teach, no matter what your rules are, there are going to be other things that come up that aren't in that. Mm -hmm. But those three really cover a lot. And probably as you go along, Sometimes when there's uh, behavioral issues, I will, I will say, I really don't like teaching manners. Where, do you, where are we supposed to learn manners? And then somebody will say at home, you know, and like, uh, I'll stop my class if I need to to teach manners, but I'd really rather teach violin. You know, I'll talk about whatever it is for you. I'd say if you could keep it to, you know, three, four, five things, you right. don't want to go in with a list of 25 yeah. things and be like, <laughs> I, I, don't do that. this, don't do this, don't do this. You know, right. then, after you school, get past yeah, three, you're just going to tune it out anyway. Right. But if you keep it brief, yeah, then that's that's good. It, you know, establishes the authority, establishes what you expect. Yes. I think it's appropriate to reference practice. Like